lesson number one of the After Effects Expressions training series. This lesson will cover the basics of After Effects Expressions, and to do so, we'll learn how to construct this flock of butterflies that you see here. This entire project has two keyframes. Everything else is handled with expressions. So let's dive right in and learn how to do this. I've got some Illustrator artwork of a butterfly that I've imported and it is included with this lesson for you to use. I've dropped these three elements into an NTSC D1 composition and I've laid them out in my composition window so they are arranged just so. This will be the starting point for our lesson. First, let's get some basics out of the way. To create an expression for a property, I hold down the Option key on the Mac, or Alt key in Windows, and I click the stopwatch next to the property to which I want the expression, not the property name. For example, to create an expression for the Y rotation property of this layer here, I Option click the stopwatch next to Y rotation. You'll notice a few things change. First, the property value changes color. Also, we have four new buttons that show up. First is a toggle switch that allows you to enable or disable the expression. Next to that, we have a switch that allows the post expression values to be graphed in the graph editor. Next to that is something called the pick whip, which we will cover shortly. And next to that is a handy expression language reference menu, which is a great reference when learning expressions. And this will come up throughout these lessons. So at this point, After Effects is waiting for me to write some code over here to tell rotation what to do. This brings us to a very important note about expressions. In any one expression for any given property, that expression can only modify the property in which we are working. For example, an expression for Y rotation can only modify Y rotation and nothing else. A Y rotation expression cannot tell scale, opacity, or anything else what to do. With this rotation expression, I could perhaps type the number 90 and rotation becomes 90. I could also use calculations including addition and subtraction using plus and minus symbols, multiplication using the asterisk, and division with the forward slash. Other things like square roots, exponents, trig functions are all accessible and we'll cover some examples of those. One thing to take note of here, Calculations in expressions follow a certain order, and you probably remember these from your grade school math class. After Effects is no exception. It will calculate things inside parentheses and brackets first, and then multiplication and division will be calculated next, addition and subtraction after that. So if we look at this calculation of 100 minus 40 times 2, this is equal to 20 because 40 times 2 is 80, that's just calculated first, and then that is subtracted from 100, so that equals 20. However, if I put 100 minus 40 inside parentheses, this will be 60 times 2, or 120. Although we would probably never use an expression that is just a numeric calculation like this, you'll find that many powerful expressions consist entirely of basic calculations like this. However, instead of raw numbers, we'll be using various expression terms that allow us to use values from other properties. And these are the terms that we need to start learning. Fortunately, there are tools that help us call up these terms so we don't have to memorize a whole lot of JavaScript terminology before we can create some powerful expressions. One of these tools I briefly mentioned earlier, it's called the Pick Whip. The Pick Whip is a tool that tells After Effects to enter the code necessary to reference the property that we target with this Pick Whip. So if I click, hold, and drag the Pick Whip to Opacity, the code that I would otherwise need to type out to reference the Opacity value here will be entered automatically. This term here, transform.opacity, represents the number of the opacity value of this layer. So just like I entered a number before, this is also essentially a number. However, this number is going to be equal to the opacity value. And it will be dynamically updated here in the rotation as opacity changes. If I drag the pick whip to the Y rotation of another layer, you'll see that the code gets a little bigger and a little more complex, but it's not total gibberish. If we look closely here, we can see that we are looking in this comp for a layer called wing right slash butterfly dot AI. 
and that has a transform property called Y rotation. So now we're looking at this Y rotation and it's driving the Y rotation of this other layer. Why would we want to do this? I'm glad you asked. I want these wings to flap in sync with each other, but in an opposite manner. To do this, I am going to create a new null. A null is just an invisible object that can be used for expressions or perhaps parenting, but they're never visible in our renders. So to this null, I will apply a slider control effect in the expression controls. Despite the fact that these expression controls are organized in the effects, an expression control has no visible effect on its own. Their sole purpose is to be used with expressions. Next, I will create expressions for both Y rotation values on the wings. And for these expressions, I will use the pick whip to target the slider property in the slider control. Notice I have to twirl this open, or I can just hit E to show the effect, which is the slider control. So now if I move the slider, you'll see that these wings both rotate identically as they're using the same value. At this point, it's important to remember that this expression here is referring to one number, despite its sheer length. So to get these wings to flap in an imposing manner, I'm going to use simple multiplication. This value here is going to be multiplied by another value, negative 1. So I'll use the asterisk for multiplication, and I will type negative 1. Now, for the sake of visual organization, I will put negative 1 in parentheses, so this makes a little more sense to us. Now, to further organize things, I will change the name of this null by accessing the solid settings and call this controller. Also, I'll select the expression slider and press return on my keyboard so I can rename this flap. You'll notice that the expression updates itself with the proper naming that I have changed here. So now if this project were handed off to another animator, things would make sense. So now if I move this slider around, these wings will flap in an opposing manner. This is exactly what we want. Now we could keyframe this motion, but we're going to use an expression to create the flapping motion of this slider. So let's learn a new term. I'm going to create an expression for this slider, and I'll type the word time. In an expression, the word time is a reserved word. It is always equal to the number in seconds where our current time indicator is located. If I play this, the slider value will slowly increase over time, increasing by a value of 1 per second. Now, that's pretty slow. However, if I make this time times 100, it will go a lot faster. In fact, 100 times faster. But this isn't what I need. I need a value that goes back and forth, not steadily increasing. To do this, I'm going to dive into the world of trigonometry and use something called a sine function. Now, don't panic if you've never studied trigonometry, or you have and you don't want to relearn it and bring up some bad memories from high school. All you need to know is this. When I plug any number into a sine function, typically expressed as SIN, sine is going to output a number between negative 1 and positive 1. It will never be any greater than that range. In fact, if I plug a series of numbers starting at 0 and increasing to infinity, sine is going to return an oscillating series of numbers that go up to 1, down to negative 1, and back again forever and ever. No matter how large the number is that I put into sine, it will keep doing the same thing, oscillating from 1 to negative 1. That's all you really need to know. Now the great thing about sine function is that not only does it oscillate back and forth, but it eases into the values of 1 and negative 1. This is exactly what I need. Now in expressions, the way we express sine is like this. Math with a capital M dot S I N and then we put in parentheses the number that I want to plug into the sign. So if you're on the same wavelength as me, you might be thinking something like this math uh, sine time. And that's pretty darn close. Time is an ever increasing value, but remember sine is always outputting a number between one and negative one. So this will indeed flap but in a range of 1 to negative 1. Not very dramatic. So what we need to do here is multiply this times a large number. I'm going to use 80. 
So now the wings will flap from positive 80 degrees back to negative 80 degrees forever and ever. It's still a little bit slow though. This rate is determined by the rate of time because I'm using the word time. If I wanted it to go faster, I would want to have the value inside the parentheses increase at a faster rate, or simply put, time needs to go faster. One easy way to do this would be to simply multiply time times a number. I could use two and it'll go twice as fast, or three, three times as fast. A little more flexible way to do this would be to create a new expression slider on this null. I'll call this speed, and then pick whip this value and use that as our multiplier. It's a little more flexible because I can vary the flap speed over time if I wanted, or just simply drag this around to get the exact value that I'd want. Great, so our butterfly is done. The wings are flapping on their own using expressions. Pretty cool, huh? So now I'm going to create a new composition. I'll call this main, and I will make this five seconds in length. I will nest this butterfly inside this composition. I want to make it a 3D layer, and I also want to make sure to click the Collapse Transformation switch so that the layers inside retain their 3D properties. This will make this very realistic looking. Next, I will scale this down to about 20%, and now I'm going to create a new null. What I'm going to do is create an expression for the butterfly position to follow the null, rather than parent this. And we'll see why in a little bit, because we're going to add an expression to this. Now, we'll learn a lot more about position expressions in the next lesson. So we're going to keep this one pretty basic. But I want to make sure to make this null a 3D layer. And I'm going to create an expression for the butterfly position. And I will pick whip the null position. So now if I create some keyframes for this null, we'll see that the butterfly will follow along. However, if I play this back, you'll see something right away that looks incorrect. Butterfly is not oriented correctly whatsoever. So let's fix this. I'm going to right click on the butterfly layer, go to Transform, Auto Orient, and I will have it orient along the path. I also need to correct its initial orientation, which needs to be 270 degrees in the x-axis, and I need to reset the y-axis to zero. So now if I play this back, other than it going a little bit slow, it looks pretty good. If I start making duplicates of this butterfly to create our flock, we'll end up with a bunch of butterflies that are in the exact same space and time. What we want is a little bit of variance in the position of this butterfly, and we're going to achieve this using an expression term called wiggle. Now I'm going to go back to my butterfly's position expression here, and then it's using the null position as its position. Now I'm going to add to this a new term called wiggle. I'm going to type the word wiggle, and then I'm going to type this out and explain it later. I will type 1, 100. Wiggle is a term that adds variance to the existing property in which we are using it. So right now, wiggle is equal to the existing position value plus some variance, and that variance is happening one time a second as much as 100 pixels in any given direction. So it's adding variance to all these values here on top of its existing position. So if I hit enter here, oh, well, what happened? Well, our butterfly moved way down here. Well, like I said, wiggle, just like everything else we've done, wiggle is a numeric value. That numeric value is equal to its existing value of this position plus some variance. So this wiggle is this position plus some variance plus this existing position here. So we've actually added together two positions. Now in lesson two we'll learn a lot more about how positions add together, but you can kind of see what's going on here. So what I need to do is subtract our existing 
position here. And I can actually just do that by typing position. The word position is equal to the value of our butterfly's position. So if I subtract that back out, it's going to end up exactly where we need it. But you notice it's a little bit off from the null. That is because it is wiggling one time a second as much as 100 pixels in any given direction. So it's going to wiggle around in a radius of 100 pixels around the null. And this is going to be different for every duplicate that I make here. So if I make a few duplicates here, and I'm going to slide these around so that they're not all flapping in sync with each other. And because the butterfly is 10 seconds long and our comp is 5 seconds long, these are all slip around very nicely. So there we go. We've got our flock of butterflies flying through the screen. And our entire project only has two keyframes. I think this is very cool, and we're just barely scratching the surface on expressions. So in the next lesson, we will cover this flowing dragon design. So I will see you in lesson two.